Well, welcome to Christ and Culture. My name is Pastor Jeff Short, and today I'm going to be talking about Wheaton College, the college I attended in the days, early days of uh, my education. And I'm going to be talking about the direction that Wheaton College has been moving lately in the last few years. And unfortunately, that is in an alarming direction. It has been moving based on the publications that I receive and the information that I've received in a secular, liberal, leftist direction. And I know that the statement of faith is solid. I know that the faculty have to sign a statement of faith every year and that the administration has to sign a statement of faith and there has to be uh, a statement of faith that's affirmed on a regular basis. But what I'm observing based on the publications that are coming out from Wheaton College is that Wheaton College is bowing or pr being pressured by society, by the government, by the social forces that are occurring in our country right now to conform to the liberal, leftist, secular, even LGBTQ uh, agenda. And so what is happening as a result is if you look at the publications that are coming out of Wheaton College, this is called uh, the Wheaton Alumni, a Wheaton, Wheaton Alumni Bulletin. And this comes every month or so to me because I was a graduate of Wheaton College. And it's supposed to give the alumni a sort of a little glimpse as to what is happening, what is taking place in the college so that they can understand uh, what's going on and so that they can uh, keep abreast of what is happening at the college. And so, for example, you have the president's perspective and you have, for example, he says, uh, Wheaton has become more diverse community. Again, you have a buzzword uh, here that is prevalent on campuses all over the country, secular colleges, secular universities. And this is a big buzzword in the modern secular world. It's called diversity. He says, Wheaton has become a more diverse community with more students of color. Again, that is another buzz phrase that is occurring at, on campuses all over the country. Uh, this affirmative action idea that uh, you're not doing right, you're not doing good, you're not a good campus, you're not a good college, you're not, uh, you, you're discriminating if you don't have a certain ratio of, quote, students with, of color. And so Wheaton College, it looks like, is beginning to try to become uh, up to speed as far as its uh, hiring and its academic enrollment uh, of students of, quote, color. So in other words, that's part of the secular world of academia. And so Wheaton College is following along in the the leadership of the secular academy. And he says, Wheaton has become a more diverse community with more students of color on campus and more diverse leaders in every level of the college. So the vision here is diversity. You have to have diversity. And haven't we heard that all along the way in the last decade or two in the United States? Government, diversity, um, business, diversity, um, diversity this, diversity that. You've got to have people of color. You've got to have a rainbow configuration. And, and if you don't have this, there's something wrong with your institution. There's something wrong with your school. There's something wrong with your college, which is totally bogus. Is totally bogus. If you're going to have a college, for example, in northern Canada, and most of the students, a great vast majority of the students are white, that simply reflects the demographic of the area. It doesn't mean that the college is racist. It doesn't mean that the college has to do anything 
to correct itself because it's evil or wrong or bad or something. It doesn't mean that at all. But according to uh, the uh, modern uh, philosophy, uh, the modern worldview of, of colleges and universities and government and secular society, that means you're doing something wrong because you're not, you're not diverse, you're not multicultural. Well, anyway, he, the president says, Wheaton has become a more diverse community with more students of color on campus and more diverse leaders at every level of college. We now have a chief intercultural engagement officer serving on the senior administrative cabinet, a thriving office. Okay, so they have a chief intercultural engagement officer. What in the world is that? What in the world is that? A chief uh, intercultural engagement officer. Well, again, this is more of the same thing that we saw before. We see that the schools are trying to um, line themselves up with a certain vision of society, a secular society, in which uh, there can't be just a natural representation of the population at a college or an institution. Uh, there can't be a uh, simply a reflection of the culture around the region of the United States. Uh, it can't be simply a reflection of the demographics. There has to be an effort to achieve a certain ratio of Asian American students, African American students, uh, and so on and so forth. You just name the demographic unit, there has to be a certain ratio. And if there isn't, there's something wrong with your school and that's wrong and if you don't uh, conform to this uh, vision of society that the secular uh, socialist actually vision of society well then you're going to run into problems all over the place you're going to have uh, threatened to lose your accreditation uh, you're threat being threatened to to lose all your financial aid uh, no more government student loans can be uh, issued at your college campus. Uh, you are going to be pressured and intimidated until you conform to the secular ideal of the secular society, which includes diversity, uh, multiculturalism, uh, ratios, affirmative action quotas, and all the whole nine yards. And we've seen this before. And so you would think that a institution like Wheaton College uh, would say, okay, we understand that this is happening in the wider society, but we're a Christian institution. We have an agenda from God. This is the motto of Wheaton College is for Christ and his kingdom. And so that's our agenda. And so we pursue that. We will educate anyone who wants to come here and who wants to be trained for service in the kingdom of God, but we won't conform ourselves to this alien worldview, this secular worldview, we won't conform ourselves to that. That's not being true to who we are. And we're not being racist. We're not being uh, bigoted. We're not being narrow-minded. We're simply being authentically Christian. We don't look at people and their skin color and their ethnic group. And we don't consider those things in uh, hiring and enrollment and in academics, we simply say everyone is welcome here who wants to study. Everyone is welcome here who, who can affirm the statement of faith and who is a Christian and is committed to Christ. Everyone is here who meets the standards and we will enroll anyone who can meet those standards and affirm the Christian identity exhibited in the statement of faith. So that's the way it should be. But no, we're having now um, this foreign philosophy, this outside philosophy, this secularism imposed on Wheaton College. And for some reason, the, the faculty and the administration, they're just uh, going along with it. That's my question. Why is the Wheaton College faculty and administration uh, simply going along with this? Why is it adopting the language of the world? Why is it adopting the methodologies of the world and the strategies of the world? Why, why is this uh, 
something that is important at Wheaton College. Why not simply go about the business of educating uh, young uh, students for Christian service and not worry about all of this political and all this social and this, this kind of socialistic uh, thinking and terminology. Why are we buying into all of this? Because frankly, if you look at the publications coming out of Wheaton College, you will not find a whole lot of what is traditional Christian terminology and traditional Christian emphasis on the biblical truth, uh, the biblical priorities, the biblical vision for evangelism and discipleship and moral instruction. I mean, for example, um, I have been glancing at and reading through this alumni magazine for years and years, if not decades. And my question is, um, is Wheaton College pro-life? Do they fight for the right of the unborn child in the womb? And do they have enough conviction to tell the world that as a college, it stands proudly and strongly in the biblical value of human life, valuing human life at all stages, including the young born, unborn. If it is pro-life, why doesn't this publication, this alumni magazine, why isn't Wheaton College putting out information that it is pro-life? Because I never see anything about pro-life causes. I never see any articles. Uh, reminding the readers about Wheaton's pro-life commitment, commitment to uh, affirming life at all stages of life. I, I don't see anything pro-life. Or, or also, uh, for example, uh, the biblical truths on marriage. These are two key cultural points, touch points, that are really uh, strong in our society right now, marriage uh, and abortion. And we've seen in, back in 1973 with Roe v. Wade, uh, that abortion was legalized in all 50 states, and Christians have been rallying around the pro-life cause ever since. But I don't see that reflected in Wheaton College's alumni bulletin. I see all kinds of things emphasized in here, but it's not distinctively Christian. Also, I don't see anything uh, about the traditional understanding of biblical marriage in the Wheaton College public relations material put out uh, through this magazine. I just don't see it. Um, maybe they hold to traditional marriage. I'm sure they do somewhere officially. There's a statement that says we affirm traditional marriage, but you would know it because it doesn't seem to be one of their priorities, even though our culture is clamoring and there's a big debate in society over uh, traditional versus these odd, strange, uh, new uh, concepts of marriage. Um, you wouldn't know that Wheaton College stands for traditional marriage uh, based on their, uh, their publications and everything because their priorities seem to be different now. For example, um, they talk a lot about diversity. They talk about uh, increasing the students of color. They talk about, they have now hired a chief intercultural engagement officer. Again, this multiculturalism emphasis that we see in the secular universities. And then it also says a thriving office of multicultural development in a new location in Lower Beamer and a more coherent approach to understanding ethnic and cultural diversity embedded within our general education curriculum. So the emphasis seems to be on diversity, multiculturalism, uh, affirmative action, and all of the buzzwords and all of the agendas of the secular world. Now my question again I ask is what is Wheaton College doing copying the world? What is a Christian institution which should be leading the world? We have revelation from God. We have the truth of God. Why are we slavishly following along the drumbeat of the world? These are all big things in the world. These are all big priorities in the world. 
The world is telling everyone, diversity, diversity, diversity. Uh, the president of Wheaton College has said on other occasions that uh, diversity is our strength. But again, that has to be qualified. That has to be explained. You just can't make a statement like diversity is our strength because that is a yes in some cases, it is a strength. But in other cases, it, no, it's not a strength. If you have diversity of moral values on a Christian campus, no, that's not a strength. If you have diversity of Christian convictions on core values at a Christian university, that's not a strength. That's the purpose of the statement of faith is to produce unity on the essential doctrines and values of the Christian faith, not diversity. So if you have diversity on Christian doctrine, and if you have diversity on morality, that's not a good thing on a Christian campus. You want to have uh, unity on doctrine, and you want to have unity on morality. Now, as far as doctrine goes, yes, there are points of doctrine. For example, concerning the last things, uh, eschatology, as it's called in theological uh, parlance, eschatology, the study of the last things, what's going to happen in the future. There is a diversity of views within Christianity as far as all of the details of what happens when Jesus returns. That's, that's to be expected. That's normal. That's natural. And uh, that has never been a problem before. Back in the uh, 50s and uh, back in the 60s at Wheaton College, uh, when some of the uh, classical professors were teaching, we're talking about uh, Carl Henry, we're talking about some of the big uh, names in evangelicalism at the time. Uh, there was always a, a unity and diversity. But today we're talking about diversity of, of views that are really stretching that whole concept to the breaking point as far as Wheaton College. And so Wheaton College has to make some decisions about whether it's going to be distinctively Christian and have conviction about those distinctions or whether it's going to follow the crowd, the secular crowd, and conform in order to maintain its financial access to government loans and government grants maintain its accreditation with the higher educational institutions so that the other institutions honor degrees offered at Wheaton and so on and so forth. Is it going to stand for firm and say, look, we're a Christian university. We don't follow the priorities of the world. We don't follow the agenda of the world. The whole diversity, multicultural, ethnic diversity, affirmative action, that whole emphasis, that's not us because that's not our, our kingdom priority. Our kingdom priority is something entirely different. We accept all students, no matter what their ethnic background, no matter what their racial background, no matter what um, their economic backgrounds, if they can meet the academic standards and they can affirm our statement of faith, they can come and attend Wheaton College. But we don't try to social engineer, manipulate, like has been popular in uh, the leftist uh, liberal circles for the last few decades. We don't do that. That's, that's what Wheaton should be about, but instead it's, it's here, for example, here's a, on page seven, it says, Dr. Sheila Caldwell, Wheaton's first intercultural engagement officer. And what in the world is that? It says, Dr. Sheila Caldwell began in June as Wheaton College's first intercultural engagement officer, a role established as a result of Wheaton's strategic prioritization to deepen ethnic diversity. So this is a Wheaton priority to deepen ethnic diversity. Why is it a, a priority of Wheaton to to deepen ethnic diversity. Is this a Christian biblical priority? Do we have New Testament teaching? Go out into the world and preach the gospel and target specific groups that are underrepresented. We don't, we don't see that mandate in the gospel. Yet Wheaton College now is, is following that kind of priority. It says, 
Sheila Caldwell is a dynamic leader with a proven track record for inspiring all students to pursue racial unity and helping faculty, staff, and students of color to flourish in the context of higher education. Racial unity. So evidently, Wheaton is also following the Marxist socialist diagnosis of society and saying that Wheaton College has a problem and that problem is uh, white privilege. We have a problem with white privilege and we are racist and we have to address this problem. It's a problem and we don't know what to do so we're going to hire a intercultural engagement officer so that we can make sure that there's racial unity on campus as if there weren't racial unity. I, I went to Wheaton College. I didn't notice any problem between students of any ethnic group. I didn't see or hear any racism. I didn't hear any racial or ethnic divisions going on campus. I don't understand what the need for this office is unless it's simply there to simply show the secular world, hey, we're up to speed with you, you all. You're setting the agenda, we'll just follow you. It says, Dr. Caldwell will serve alongside President Rakin and provide key leadership for defining and meeting campus-wide goals to deepen ethnic diversity. So there are goals for ethnic diversity, promote racial reconciliation, and advance intercultural understanding. So it looks like the administration and the faculty and the whole Wheaton Co College community has embraced this whole uh, social justice philosophy emphasis. That's what it looks like. And so if you send your students to Wheaton College, you are going to have them uh, taught the whole SJW, social justice warrior, uh, philosophy that there's white oppression, there's systemic racism, and there has to be uh, quotas and goals of the institution to combat this terrible thing because it's such a terrible problem on campus, which I question. It says, Dr. Caldwell has about two decades of experience in higher education. Most recently, she served as the advisor to the president on diversity at the University of North Georgia, where she secured grants that helped economically disadvantaged students achieve college success, increase the number of faculty of color, and facilitated the creation of UNG's first diversity leadership and vision statement. So uh, she helped increase the number of faculty of color. So in other words, we're talking quotas here ethnic racial quotas. Again, what does Wheaton College have to do with all of this? It goes on, I am honored and humbled to join a Christ-centered community filled with talented and innovative leaders in higher education, Dr. Caldwell says. As the inaugural Chief Intercultural Engagement Officer, I will collaborate with faculty, staff, and students to create structures that will enhance equality and inclusive excellence in the classroom with the goal of fortifying Christian and advancing the kingdom of God. So here we have more buzzwords, inclusivity, equality, equity. It's all the same language and all of the same concepts we've heard many, many times before, only on secular state run colleges and universities. And now Christian Wheaton College is following right along. And if you look through all of their publication, you will find very, very little traditional biblical priorities emphasized. There's a very secular atmosphere that's taking over. There's a very secular language that's now being used in Wheaton College publications. There's a de-emphasis 
on theology and winning the world for Jesus Christ. For example, during the time a couple years ago when uh, Luisha Hawkins, a Wheaton College professor, began to make some uh, inconsistent statements about Islam and Christianity and how we worship the same God and how we need to uh, help our brothers and sister Muslims and all this kind of stuff, totally incompatible with our Christian faith. Um, Wheaton College uh, did uh, talk with her and did deal with that situation. She's no longer there at Wheaton College, but it did not teach the truth on this issue. It did not use that teachable moment. In fact, it, it basically tried to manage the problem to the point where it wanted that issue to just go away. And instead of stepping up, having professors write papers, having conferences, opening up a dialogue and discussion and even debates on this topic, uh, Wheaton College pretty much was silent. They didn't want any controversy. They didn't want any criticism from the world. Again, that was a prime time to step up and be the teachers, be the professors that profess Christianity. And Wheaton College decided to retreat into becoming a more diverse culture. I'm not sure what the motivation is. I have a feeling they're trying to survive in a secular world and they need government financial assistance and grants and government student loans for the um, students. And, so, and they also want to remain accredited with the higher education boards. And so they're trying to convince everybody that they can be just as secular as the state colleges. And I'm saying that's a bad mistake. And they need to come out and be distinctively Christian and have priorities that actually reflect the Bible and not just copy the secular world. So I hope that Wheaton College can realize what it's doing in this secular drift and come out of it and get back to the business of educating students with a consistent biblical worldview and apply that worldview to the world we live in, to be a distinct voice, not just copy the secular world, not just talk about diversity, not just talk about multiculturalism, not just talk about affirmative action, not just talk about social justice and the socialist Marxist analysis of society and all the leftist liberal causes. Let's see Wheaton College step up and be a truly biblical Christian institution again not cave to the secular world. Well, hope that's helped you, and we'll talk to you later on another edition of Christ and Culture. God bless.